It's interesting that you brought out a point of uh, next life, uh, the previous life, this current life in, on this earth, and the pr uh, life to come. Um, many people, um, they believe that uh, if they are so focused on uh, the life to come, yeah. and they believe that uh, killing innocent people will uh, surely take him. Um, you've seen, I mean, I, the rhetoric, yeah. the rhetoric uh, of suicide bombers yes. um, th who kill innocent civilians convinced that their reward is in the next life. Yes. People who, have, who are of different belief in this world is okay for them to be killed to, in order for them to re re uh, receive a reward in the next life. Mm -hmm. So um, my question to you is, what leads these people to do such uh, such actions? Is there any basis for, the, uh, for these people okay. in Islam? You have to understand the background to this, this issue. Okay. In my conviction, the religion of Islam and what it really has to say about these things uh, has been distorted and hijacked okay. by two entities. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, there are disturbed and extreme individuals within the Muslim community mm -hmm. that are using religious texts, rather I should say misusing religious texts, to justify their positions. Mm -hmm. And these are people more often than not that, have, that are deeply disturbed individuals. Themselves. Themselves. So their psychological issues manifest themselves in a misinterpretation of the religion. In most cases, unless it's deliberately misinterpreted, mm -hmm. and in very few cases is it a genuine misreading of mm -hmm. the text. On the other hand, there are those who have decided that Islam is the enemy and Islam is what to, is to blame for all extremism, etc., etc. And therefore, they have de decided to demonize Islam and call it the religion of suicide bombings, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is this extreme element on the one hand that's within the Muslims and the extreme element that is antagonistic to Islam from outside Islam, okay. they're saying exactly the same thing. And the vast majority of Muslims... And the scholarship of Islam is stuck in the middle, hijacked between these two extremes. Between these two. And the, the, the common person doesn't get to hear what the average Muslim himself or herself believes about these things or what the scholarly tradition of Islam has to say about these things ever. Mm -hmm. So this issue is something I believe hasn't been given the light of day. It deserves more attention. Mm -hmm. It deserves a comprehensive discussion. And l like we said about justice, right. part of justice is that the Muslims themselves, I myself, you yourself, Muslims in general, own up to the fact that extremism within us exists. That's right. And it, it should be combated, and it's an, it not only is it an attack against innocent people mm -hmm. and innocent civilians, but it's an attack on the integrity of Islam itself. Okay. Islam is being attacked when someone says these things. Right. Because Islam is being misrepresented, and if I find my dignity with Islam, mm -hmm. then I have to stand up for Islam and refute these kinds of things. Now, what basis is used? I'll give you the brief, this is a long discussion, I'll give you the briefest version of it. You know, in discourse, you have such a thing called uh, a foregone conclusion. Mm -hmm. What that means in simple terms is, you've made a decision that you want to kill innocent people. Now that you've made that decision, you want justification for what you're going to do. So you start looking at the book, mm -hmm. and you start trying to find things you can use to justify your position. Your actions. So you make a collection of quotes mm -hmm. that if put together in a stream of thought, in a stream of uh, you know discussion mm -hmm. will lead to the conclusion you already decided you're going to do. Okay. And anything you read that may contradict your conclusion, mm -hmm. and any discussion that might refute your claim, you will conveniently omit, like it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Okay. So now when you, make, when you take these statements mm -hmm. and you put them in string order mm -hmm. and you make your conclusion, it sounds as though you are genuinely quoting the Qur'an, you're mm -hmm. quoting religious sacred text, and coming to these valid conclusions because the texts exist. But in any civilization, in any half-intellectual society, mm -hmm. there's the concept of proper context. There's the, pro there's, the context of, there's the issue of historical context and textual context. Where is the verse coming from? How was it applied? How have the Muslims acted on that verse mm -hmm. for the last millennium and a half? For the last millennium and a half. Mm -hmm. And how is somebody going to come around and read that one verse mm -hmm and come up with their own conclusions that contradicts the entire intellectual tradition of a civilization that spans continents right. and completely contradict it and then we say there's a legitimate opinion. It's not a legitimate it's opinion. Not. It's I a understand. genuine misreading of the text. I see. And 
I know this is again a long conversation, but just one small food for thought. Mm -hmm. Suicide bombers in particular, or, or people who engage in acts of violence against civilian targets, okay. are acting out typically on their own, individually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or at the most under the organization of a small cell or group or whatever. In other words, they've taken whatever verses they have and decided this is something they have the authority to execute on their own. Fighting, killing, whatever it may be mm -hmm. that they think they're doing is on their own authority. You tell me, how is it possible to have an Islamic civilization, a government that has existed for, for centuries? For long, it's a long time. If millions and millions of people living under that government felt they can take killing in their own hands. They can take, you know, uh, killing people and taking revenge or... Whatever injunctions they may be that in, that in, that include punitive action, any kind of action that harms another. Mm -hmm. If individuals feel they can take that in their own hand, then that is the end of law and order. And you cannot have a civilized you cannot, society. You cannot, you cannot if coexist. there is going to be any kind of punitive action, be it the death penalty or imprisonment or punishment, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. whatever punishment is there, if it's not executed by a body of government, mm -hmm. a governing body, you know, and, it, and if it is, by the way, it's part of the constitutional law. That's right. But if you take it in your own hands, you can only be called a criminal. Mm -hmm. And so for the Muslims, and I'll be honest with you, like for example, the, the 25th of December, the, 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 the issue in uh, Detroit. Right. Right. You know, and what do Muslims have to say about that? Well, what if I'm traveling? I travel with my family on the time. What if I'm on the plane? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stand up. I'm not going to beat that guy up Definitely. or do whatever I can to get rid of him. Definitely. You know, they would. For, it's not like Muslims are. We're not supposed to be blinded by the fact that somebody is Muslim. We're mm -hmm. saying this is a crime and it doesn't matter who does it who does because it? we have to stand up for justice even if it is against our own selves. Makes sense. One of the brothers in the Dawah group told me that Imam, it is our goal to give every American a copy of the Quran. The question is simple. Are we ready to support this noble effort? Share what we've been blessed with? Islam. We invite you to join and support 877Y Islam. Let's gain the pleasure of Allah by fulfilling our collective obligation to serve His Deen.